Hey Delvers, Nathan here. You know, a couple weeks ago I put out a video called Delve's New Groove where I talked about all these exciting new programs you can expect from Delve Prime. Yeah, that's not actually a thing, but here's what's interesting. I did wonder if there were any members of our community that might have other potential ideas uh, for Delve Prime if we assume that it's going to become a thing. And uh, we, we got a few, and just out uh, at the front, I would like to thank Drunk Paul, James Braffin, and DC Lasser for uh, sharing some ideas with me. And uh, I have to tell you, these are pretty great. We did go over them in more detail on our Delve Live episode, uh, but, uh, you know, I thought that it would be nice and convenient if I uh, talked about them here. Cave Delve. Talking about games while deep in a cave. Not responsible for getting attacked by cave monsters. I think that that takes the artwork for Delve too literally, but okay, I'll play along with that idea. The cave monsters are a definite problem. We would probably have to have people sign a waiver if they were coming to visit us. Uh, and also, you have to get the right kind of cave for the acoustics, sort of like Red Rocks. Taptacular. An audio-only podcast of tap dance routines. I understand that actually has nothing to do with tabletop gaming, but still, that does sound like the kind of premium content you can expect from a subscription service like Delve Prime. You know, for some reason I imagine that might be a hit. You know, can you imagine the number of people that are looking for, you know, like white noise or potentially ASMR videos? Well, what if you liked ASMR, but were also big into tap? I think that we might have an untapped market in that one. Real easy for me to produce, too. Cast Cast. Listen as we make molds of anyone who has been on Delvecast, Breathing Straws Extra. There's a few hurdles with this one. The first one is repeat guests are going to be basically out of question. Can't do it. Two, um, it's pretty tricky to convince people to come on the show a lot of the time, but it is incredibly difficult if they are aware they are likely not going to survive being on the show. That's something that you have to work out. I feel like this is the kind of project that is, like, far in the future. And really just if we want to try and examine the art versus the artist. I think that there are probably better ways to do that that have less of a body count. But, you know, we're just in ideation right now. So, you know, sky's the limit. No dice. Players test their mental RNG on this actual play podcast where they pretend to roll the dice. Do players give themselves the proper probability each time they make a roll? Do they only get 20s in high drama moments? Are you prepared for this numeric assault on the senses? DC went deep on that one, let me tell you. Now, on the surface, that probably sounds pretty silly, right? You know, you're taking one of the basic mechanics of role-playing games and you're just throwing out the window, i.e. dice. But at the same time, what a lovely sociological experiment that is. It tells you a lot about the player's uh, mental state, about their self-esteem levels, when they think they deserve to roll high when they think that they really haven't done a very good job, so they roll low. You know, I think that there's actually quite a bit of merit in that, you know? If you think about it, when you're listening to uh, an actual play podcast, you can't see the players rolling these, right? Maybe they are just shouting out numbers. But the great thing about it is, uh, as a, a social experiment, why not? Realistically, if they're having fun, that's all that matters, right, folks? That's why we play games. We want to have fun and also have a deep engrossing storyline that hopefully doesn't kill our characters off. But see, not seeing my character die, tragically, is fun for me. <laughs> so, okay, so then we have live action role delving or lard. 
I am going to try to explain this the way James explained it to me. But imagine you have a live play podcast, but all of your players are playing game mechanics as their player character. Yeah, I think I want to be a saving throw. Can my character just be a saving throw? Does that mean I... Can I actually fail any saving throws if I am playing a saving throw? Questions abound, but think about it. Lexi time! So imagine you have like a round table discussion of different designers, and you build a role-playing game one sentence at a time going around the circle. It's like telephone, but you make a game out of it. Literally, you create a game out of that process. I can't see that going badly at all. Probably better if I'm not involved in that project. And finally, a suggestion for a video series. Different paint strokes. One, I do love the idea that it's a spin-off of a television show. Every episode, three swaths of paint are put on a canvas. Which one will dry first? This actually sounds terrific, because I think it's easy enough for me to set up. I think I could easily do that. I just need to get a blank wall and some of those discount paints that they sell at the hardware stores. You know, they weren't a match for the color that the customer wanted. So you can just pick them up on the cheap, right? And I just splat a whole bunch of them at, at a wall. And then you just put a camera on it. And before you know it, quality programming. You know, every single one of us at some point in our lives have asked how we could make watching paint dry an entertaining activity. And I think, I think we might have finally found the way. Think of it, it's kind of like NASCAR, but with paint. Maybe that's why there's all of those paint companies that sponsor NASCARs. <laughs> Maybe they were thinking about this, but they were too afraid to say anything. <laughs> yeah, you know that you'd have to have a ton of statutes, though, about how tacky the paint is going to be. And like, you know, what's the water content left in the paint? Who is going to put down the regulations for the Paint Drying Standards and Practices Board? So there are some of the projects that I am going to get right on eventually. Someday in the unforeseeable future. Thank you to everyone who uh, took an interest in Delve Prime, uh, which was really just a, a fun little joke I made for April Fool's Day uh, to uh, poke a little fun at the subscription models coming to podcasting and how that seems like a pretty unnecessary thing. But as always, don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. All the cool kids were doing it, but they're not here anymore. Because they... they unsubscribed. See how that works. Yeah. Hey, if you have any, uh, other suggestions, the... the more terrible, the better. Feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Always looking for... useless premium content. <laughs> We are so good at marketing.